Welcome back. We are here looking at the indexes. Uh, we are going to look at the S&P 500, the Dow Jones, and the Nasdaq. And uh, we broke the all-time highs. Uh, miraculously, I have to say. Um, we uh, The world is uh, basically in a recession. The United States economy is doing uh, terribly, uh, but the financial markets are booming. Well, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, but at this point, you could focus on the, uh, the fundamentals of the economy or you can just earn money on the, on the financial markets. Um, but I have some worrying signs that this r bullish run that we, be, uh, we have been on since the end of uh, March will stop eventually. So I have two scenarios. One is that basically we'll continue upwards. The other one is basically that we'll have um, we'll have uh, a double top here, and uh, we have and then we'll go down before we go up again. And my worst case scenario is that we break down completely. Um, and the reason why I say that is that the United States economy is doing really, really, really badly. We have another. Uh, jobless claim that was above 1 million, 1.1 million people uh, uh, applied for for uh, for unemployment insurance uh, last uh, last week, uh, and that is not good. And that was on Thursday, and we can see that the market jumped. And you can ask why did the market jump? Well, you apparently have the Federal Reserve um, technically has an office now that every single time uh, that uh, there is a negative news, they just buy everything, like everything, junk bonds, everything. And as long as that is the case, as long as the Federal Reserve is willing to basically uh, spend as much money as it is at, the, at this current uh, period, we'll just see this market go higher. Um, yes, so we basically stopped here, which is the all-time highs of, uh, of uh, 3,400. And uh, at this point, if we just look at the technical indicators, they are fairly negative, all of them. So we are overbought. We are above 70, we are about, and it's basically heading downwards, the RSI. The same goes for the MACD. It basically crossed the signal line on Thursday, so on, like that, yeah. And we are basically heading downwards from here. Bollinger Band, we are basically at the top of the Bollinger Band, basically been trading flat here, and we are expected to go down at least to the to this moving average. And the same goes for the stochastic. It basically broke the signal line, and it's basically heading downwards. So... If we break down from here, the 20 expansion moving average has been uh, has been support. If that breaks, we have the 40 expansion moving average, which is around, uh, we have this area here, 3,334. Then we have this area, which is 3,265. And then underneath that, we have the 50 moving average, which, has, which is at around 3,000. 221. If we were to break down here, I would buy. Definitely. That's, this is the best case scenario. And I would put a stop loss right underneath. And the reason why that is that I am not too optimistic for this market. And we have to look, this, look at this in a historical uh, perspective. Uh, first of all, this could be a double top. And if it is a double top, we are going much lower from here. Uh, how much, lo much lower? Well, we can look at the Fibonacci retracements. And we can see that the first is at the 23.6 uh, 23 retracement here, which is this area, which is at 3,100, something like that. Then the next one is here at uh, 30, uh, 38.2. And that is just uh, underneath the 3,000 level. After that, we get to the 50, which is at 
uh, around uh, 2,800, and the 60 is at 2,670. If these were to break, we'll go down here. I don't expect them to break. I expect them, in, in the worst case scenario, to go down to the 50, which is around 2,800. And the reason why I say that is that the underlying economy is horrible. Uh, and people probably comment about that this is the financial markets and not the real economy. Yeah, that is true. But also, the, if you didn't have companies, then you would not have financial markets. They are basically built on the economy, on the companies that are in the real economy. So if they are doing well, then financial markets should also do well and so on. Uh, the reason why we have this pullback is not due to companies doing well. Not at all. There are a handful of companies like tech companies like Apple and Microsoft and, uh, and Netflix and so on that are doing well, Amazon and, and, and so on. The rest of the economy doing horrible. There's the highest unemployment in, in, in several decades. Uh, technically, the numbers are frightening. And it will take a long time before the United States economy will recover from this uh, crisis. Uh, and when they recover, they will have another problem. And that is basically the enormous debt that this crisis has created. And this is not a recession. Recessions take far longer. This is basically just a massive sell-off of fear that happened here. And that's also why we have this massive bounce here because people saw that we are oversold and they basically now they're overbought. The rest is technically the Fed. Every single time bad news has arrived, Fed has stepped in. So recessions take longer. If you basically look at the last two recessions, I can just move this. This is the this is the dot com bubble. It started in 2000, ended in around 2003. Took two years and it fell uh, a whopping almost 50%, uh, 47.86% in these two years. Next is the Great Recession. It uh, started around uh, 2007, ended in 2009, bottom 2009, and it fell 57.49%. Uh, two years. Both of them two years. If you look at other recessions, they take a longer time uh, for the market to bottom. This is just an enormous pullback. This is not a recession. This is just an enormous pullback. We had one uh, earlier in, in 2018 where we fell all the way down to the 50 uh, moving average. And now we fell down to the 100 moving average. So, and then we can just continue. So, we have been in a bullish run from 2009 to 2020. Even though this looked like a recession, this is not the recession. This is not the recession that we technically have been waiting for for three years now. Usually the market increases for a maximum of eight years and then we have a recession. We have basically been in a bullish run for 11 years and we have not had a recession yet. So the question is whether or not the coronavirus will create the recession that we have been, uh, that economists have been expecting. Uh, that may very well be. Uh, in that case, the scenario will fall much lower than this low. And this is a decrease in value of 35.33%. Uh, this is a mild recession, but not even close to the uh, dot com bubble. Not even close to the to the um, to the to the Great Recession. And what we probably will expect is a debt crisis. So the debt that this um, that this uh, coronavirus coronavirus has created, and, uh, and the debt that was piled up by uh, really ridiculous wars and overspending and so on, probably will cause a massive recession in the near future. 
uh, we already seen uh, signs of problems, grave problems, for example, in the housing sector, where uh, where um, evictions or or lending and so on, and where evictions are just going through the roof, and that will that will be painful for a lot of uh, states because main uh, there most of the major cities income comes basically from the housing market so i'm not buying at this point i'm if, if i am buying i'm i'm looking at these massive dips and then i'll have a a, a sh- uh, i have a sell loss right underneath just in order if this basically were to go the other way and i would encourage everybody to use their stop losses because this market is basically run by the Fed, not by the by the economy. So, um, yes, let's look at the Dow Jones. So, the Dow Jones looks far more like uh, the other industrial indexes in Europe, in Asia, and so on. So, it is has been trading sideways for quite a long time now, basically in the, in the beginning of June. It has been trading sideways, and this will take longer for in order to get to the all-time highs. We haven't filled this gap. We haven't basically reached the all-time highs. There are indications that we probably will go higher. Maybe uh, my bet is that we will basically go lower from here before we go higher. So, um, if you look at support levels, the twenty exponential moving average has been acting as support. If we break down from there, that we have the 50 moving average, which has been acting as support. And uh, if we go further from there, well, well, we'll go much lower then if we go further from there. Uh, if you look at the Fibonacci retracement, we can see that we would go down to this area, which is uh, the first retracement at around 25,600. Then we would go down to uh, 24,000, and then we go down to 23,000, and all the way down to 22,000 in worst case scenario. Not worst case, if this breaks, then we'll go down to this area. Um, if we look at the technical indicators, we have the MACD that is about to cross the signal line, indicating that we'll go lower. We are way over bought at this point, so we most likely will go lower. We are at top of the Bollinger Band, so and we also, the MAC, uh, the Zocastic is heading, uh, pointing upwards, but that is due to this candlestick here. Uh, I don't expect us to go high to the all-time highs at this point. I expect a pullback, and um, and uh, similar to the S&P 500, I will be uh, a buyer of these pullbacks with a stop loss underneath um, because I am skeptical that this market will go to uh, all time highs and break all time highs. Sorry. Uh, break all time highs and so on. So, um, yeah. Yeah, this I'll probably just uh, trade the S&P 100 instead of the Dow Jones. Now is the Nasdaq, and uh, Nasdaq is still continuing uh, trading in this channel. It has been uh, trading in this channel for a long time now, and uh, I this is my favorite type of trading. That is basically just trading within these channels, in this channel. And uh, as long as that is the case, as long as we don't break through uh, uh, the upper barrier or the lower barrier, then then it's really predictable. Uh, if we get close to the to the lower, this is support. This is a buying opportunity. If we get uh, close to the to the highest, is a selling opportunity. Um, so yeah, the less risky thing is basically to to sell, but. As long as, as you basically see, every single time we get close to these to these uh, support and resistance area, it is a buying or selling opportunity. If we look at the the the, the technical indicators, we can see that the uh, MACD is uh, heading upwards. We are not overbought at the moment, but it is heading downwards. 
The same goes for stochastic. It is technically indicating that we are going down and we are on the top of the Bollinger Band. So we may have a short term pullback. If we do, we'll probably go down to the to 20 exponential moving average, which is around this area here. We'll be at uh, 11,200, something like that. And um, yeah, and then this will just continue higher to uh, 12,000 and beyond. And the reason why I say this is because there are the darlings of, uh, of the financial world in this index, like Google, Apple, Maga, Microsoft, and so on. And um, even in the coronavirus period, these companies have only gone stronger. And if there were to be a lockdown of any sort again, these companies will go even stronger. Um, Apple became the first company that went past a value of $2 trillion. One company. Probably have the half of the world GDP is not a, a company. Well, uh, world uh, countries have not two trillion dollars, and and this company does in value. So buying the dips, selling the selling the highs, getting close to this uh, the channel is technically what I'm doing. So uh, hope you find this uh, video interesting. You're welcome to support our channel by subscribing, clicking the bell button and the like button, and um, and uh, good luck and see you later. Thank you very much.